Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just going to do a quick video today looking at the uh, the low pass filter which I'll have at the input of the radio. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to make this a half wave filter. Uh, it's, a, it's a quick and easy and simple filter which um, may not necessarily have the best performance in the world, but it's a, it's a filter I like because it's sort of quite nice and easy to, to do the maths and um, the performance, for, certainly for my circuits, has been just fine. So just coming back to looking at that particular configuration, uh, as we saw there on the actual circuit itself, we have um, two inductors and three capacitors, so five reactive components uh, configured as we see there. The way it works, um, at, the, at the minus 3 dB point, which we'll look at, uh, we set up the inductive, the inductive reactants uh, for the two inductors to be uh, 50 ohms at that frequency. The two outer capacitors, the capacitive reactants is also 50 ohms and the inner one is set to be uh, 25 ohms, so half that value. So in terms of uh, this filter's uh, minus 3 dB point, um, from online with the, the, the literature for this particular filter, uh, the rule of thumb is you set your maximum desired frequency, so you, which you don't want to be attenuated, so in other words the highest frequency in the passband. Uh, and then multiply that by 1.2 and you set that to be your minus 3 dB point. So in my particular case the upper end of the broadcast band is 1600 or 1 1.6 megahertz. Uh, multiply that by 1.2 comes out at 1.92. That's going to round that up to, to 2 megs which will be close enough for, for my purposes. So that's going to be my minus 3 dB point. And as I said at that particular point we want the uh, XL1 and 2 to be 50 ohms. XC1 and XC3 to be 50 ohms and XC2 to be 25 ohms which I've depicted there. As we know XL equals 2 pi FL so we can rearrange that formula to make uh, our inductor the subject and then plug in the values that we've just uh, now determined. So 50 ohms divided by 2 pi 2 megs equals 3.97 microhenries. Um, in the junk box I've got a couple of T68-2s uh, which will be just fine for this particular application. So using the online uh, toroid uh, calculator which I like to use, um, the, the closest full turn count to, to, to make that is 26 turns. So that's what I'll use. So two inductors with 26 turns uh, for that. So for the two outer capacitors, uh, C1 and C3, we know that XC equals one, of, 1 over 2 pi FC. So just rearranging their formula and plugging in the values. Uh, 1 over 2 pi 2 megs 50 ohms comes out at 1.59 nanofarads and I'm going to use a, um, a, one, a 1500 picofarad capacitor not exactly spot on but uh, again for, for my purposes it'll be just fine I'm sure um, and then for the inner capacitor uh, same, same formula but as we mentioned before it's 25 ohms which comes out at 3.18 nanofarads so I'm just going to use two 1500 picofarad capacitors uh, in parallel uh, and that's exactly what I've done uh, over here so just coming back to the circuit try and get out of that reflection so with the two two inductors our two capacitors from the input to earth and then the center between the two um, inductors we've got those two 1500 picofarad capacitors in parallel I tried to Play around with just to see if it would make any difference, and, and I didn't actually see a huge amount of difference to have a, a bit of a shield between the two stages. Um, but hey, it was in there, so I've left it in there. So, just switching through uh, back to the spec can running with the um, tracking generator. So, just a uh, to look at the uh, the pass response for that. So I set up the um, the tracking generator to run from. Uh, 1500 kilohertz through to 30 megs uh, and with the cabling normalized and then with the uh, filter inserted uh, this is the uh, the pass band that we're getting for it so if we go back to in the main pass band there we're sort of getting minus one to sort of uh, well, half to minus two roughly db across that band where I'm going to be sitting is roughly about there somewhere which is sort of minus one db for insertion loss for that particular filter. Um, interesting enough, you know, we talked about the minus 3 dB point being at 2 megs, um, but because of my values I've got in there, it's it's sitting more like, if we run down to about there somewhere, sort of 2.7 megs. 
again not going to be a problem for me because it's on the higher side of my desired pass band um, yeah so we should be fine off we down there so it looks like our maximum attenuation uh, all things being equal is roughly minus 7 dB and then as the frequency increases it sort of stabilizes out at roughly minus 48 odd uh, dB uh, so I'm not going to attempt to make that any better at this stage so I'm just going to uh, run with that and uh, move on so next stage will be the RF amplifier I think I'll do next I'll make up a simple control panel on the front with um, a variable RF gain pot uh, one for the IF and um, call it there I'm not going to bother with a uh, with, a, with an S meter or anything because it's basically just going to be sitting there on a fixed frequency um, so I don't need to worry too much about that uh, what, I've, what I am going to try and do is just get away with um, not actually enclosing the VFO I'm going to leave that uh, as we see there um, just to see how we get on so I've used some nice stiff wire there to, to connect the um, capacitor through to the, the main board uh, the inductors now um, are glued down to the bottom and I've got some separation between the input and the output which actually was actually quite interesting it's, it's cleaned up the waveform quite considerably which is um, interesting there must be just a little bit of feedback potentially from the buffer cross uh, into potentially uh, one of these two uh, capacitors there anyway that's all good so we'll give that a go and like I say I'll move on to the RF amplifier um, and then we'll start to stitch things together um, I've got to put some thought into the audio frequency amp, it's going to be interesting um, yeah, anyway enough said, I will see you next time 73, cheers